Hello, my name is Paul Raftree and I'm the CEO of Project RH and I'm in Sydney today. And I am joined by Dr. Tim Oldham, Managing Director of ASX Listed Al Alta and also Managing Director of Ad Alta Subsidiary Ad Solus. Tim is in Melbourne. Tim, thanks for finding the time to, to talk to me today. And we look forward to having a discussion about Ad Solus and the potential of having AD214 raising capital in North America. And we see it being sold there because that's the world's largest market. Welcome, Tim. My pleasure to be with you today, Paul. Tim, could you give me a brief overview of the history of Adalta and where it is today? Antibody drugs transformed the pharmaceutical industry 30 odd years ago and have since grown into a $200 billion industry. Uh, but there are big gaps in what they can do. And Adalta was founded uh, using our proprietary iBody drug discovery platform to mimic the capability of antibody drugs, but to go where antibody drugs cannot. Uh, and so far, we've managed to develop our lead asset, most advanced asset, AD214, which we'll talk more about today, um, through to the end of phase one clinical trials for some debilitating fibrotic or scarring diseases. We have four other programs in early discovery stage in the field of immuno-oncology, including a collaboration with GE Healthcare, the world's largest diagnostic imaging company. And we've just announced a new collaboration to create a new business unit called Adcella, uh, which will focus on bringing groundbreaking cellular immunotherapies uh, from Asia into Western regulated markets and enhancing those products with our iBody platform as well. So five programs, two business units, um, and a mission to go where traditional antibody drugs cannot. Thank you, Tim. The key asset of Adalta is AD214, and it's a revolutionary protein. But AD214 is an iBody. Can you first explain to us what an iBody is? So iBodies are a family of human proteins uh, comprising a constant backbone region and variable components. And that variation enables different iBodies to be used to treat different diseases because they'll have different properties. We have libraries of billions of variants of these iBodies um, and we can mine those libraries for the small number of iBodies that bind to a specific drug target that can be used to modify a specific disease. Um, the iBody selected for a specific disease application then becomes a product and gets a name, for example, AD214, uh, which is one such product. And that name is generic at this point for now, and we'll change it to a brand name later on. Uh, but the iBody, think of it as the intel inside, the, the, the engine room of a whole family of drugs and different iBodies result in different drugs. Tim, can you tell us why AD214 is so special? So we're uh, developing AD214 for a class of diseases called fibrotic diseases. Um, and these uh, are uh, debilitating and very poorly managed diseases today. Uh, there have been efforts to treat them for uh, decades uh, without a lot of success. Our lead indication, for example, is a disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or IPF. Two drugs were approved in 2014. Uh, there have been no new drugs approved since and those drugs don't work particularly well. AD214 is special because it takes a completely new approach to fibrosis. It's targeting a biochemical pathway known to be involved in the disease, but not yet targeted by every other therapeutics in the pipeline. And we believe it's our eye bodies that have enabled us to, to address this particular pathway. Um, our eye body technology enables us to do this with antibody like precision, where all the other molecules in the pipeline are small molecules. Uh, which have associated side effect complications, uh, increased risks, and statistically higher failure rates at, at phase two clinical trials. We were able to select and modify the eye body used in AD214 specifically to tailor it for use in fibrotic diseases, reducing the potential effects in other areas. We have a really compelling panel of evidence supporting the efficacy of AD214 in fibrosis, both from animal models and also laboratory studies, uh, which has been really well appre appreciated and accepted by larger pharmaceutical companies. And we believe that we can ultimately deliver this 
drug uh, subcutaneously, i.e. an injection under the skin, uh, rather than just intravenously like many other proteins. And this will be way more convenient for patients. We have a qualified list of pharmaceutical companies interested in licensing AD214 at the end of, 80, uh, end of phase two clinical studies or potentially earlier, demonstrating the commercial potential of this asset. So what are the applications and how are these being realized? So fibrosis or scarring can affect almost any organ in the body. Um, in fact, it's probably implicated in almost 45% of all deaths. It's a response to injury. It's a normal wound healing response, but it often gets out of control. And when it does, it results in disruption of normal organ function. You know when you cut your skin uh, that you get a scar and the skin is not as plastic or as elastic as it normally is. Uh, it can pucker and stretch. When that happens in your lungs or your kidneys, it destroys the organ function. Examples of where AD214 might be used to treat fibrosis include lung fibrosis, which is a four to five billion dollar market today with two drugs that don't work. Kidney fibrosis, which is potentially a $10 billion market, or eye fibrosis, uh, which is the leading cause of blindness in Western countries at least, um, and is a potentially a $16 billion market. Uh, there are also possible applications in cancer. We'll realise this potential by developing AD214 initially for lung fibrosis, um, and progress. our role is to progress that through uh, phase one done, now and then phase two clinical trials. Uh, after which we would anticipate licensing it to larger pharmaceutical companies to uh, fully complete development, registration and commercialization. Uh, along the way, those pharmaceutical companies would then start to do the clinical trials necessary to expand into those other indications or applications over time. Okay. So today I'm primarily wanting to talk about lung fibrosis. You, we have discussed my father died of a smoking induced emphysema and my middle child has had very serious asthma and, and which he lost fortunately in his late teens but can you explain to us how ad214 assists patients and extends their lives yes yeah, so let's talk about uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis uh, or ipf uh, <laughs> bit of a mouthful but essentially scarring in the lungs is caused by injury to the lungs this could be induced by dust, um, it could be induced by smoking, it could be induced by uh, rock dust in silicosis, for example, or silica dust. Um, and in some cases, it can happen spontaneously. And in this case, we don't know what causes it. It's called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis for a reason. Idiopathic means we don't understand exactly what causes it. But what we do know is that it's progressive. There are half a million patients around the world today diagnosed with IPF, and that number is going to continue to grow. Of those patients, 50% will be dead within four to five years because we have no way of stopping fibrosis today. Uh, we did get two drugs approved in 2014. They generate 5 billion in sales a year today, but they don't work particularly well. They uh, cause serious side effects such as diarrhea, photosensitivity, i.e. you get sunburnt when you go out uh, outside uh, when you're using them, and they may slow progression, they may add a year of life, uh, but they're not helping the debilitation that patients describe. Uh, patients with IPF describe the disease as being like fighting for your next breath. You don't know where it's going to come from. It's like drowning. It's not like being puffed when you're climbing the stairs. Uh, they describe the stigma that comes with a lung disease that means that people assume they must have been smokers and it must be self-inflicted. Many of these patients have never touched a cigarette in their lives. They describe the despair that comes with uh, their relatives, their children, deciding not to bring the grandkids around to visit because grandma or granddad is too tired and too puffed all the time. So the mental illness associated with uh, living with this disease, let alone the fact that you're a death sentence, is significant. So that's why it's desperate that we have a new approach to, to IPF. We need to halt the progression of this disease. That is what we're hoping to achieve with AD214. Uh, we've done everything we can to date to uh, prove that this mechanism, this drug could work, short of pushing it into IPF or putting it into IPF patients and seeing how they actually respond. And that's the next step um, of uh, development of this particular drug. 
Tim, I've read you've got multiple strategies for developing AD214. But can you talk to me about the specific strategy of, associated with AdSolus? Yeah, so in our industry, it is really common for companies and investors to, to participate in different stages of drug development. Each stage is well-defined uh, and carries with it different levels of investment and different risks associated with it. Adalta, our parent company's role is to be involved, to own our intellectual property and our drug discovery platform, to discover new drug candidates and develop them through the end of what's called preclinical development before it goes into humans and early clinical development. And that's what our Adalta investors are signed up to do. Once we get a drug to the stage where we have with AD214, it's time to hand that over to a different group of investors with access to more capital, but a lower risk appetite. We've already de-risked the development of AD214 significantly uh, to carry it through to the next stage. The creation of AdSolus enables those investors to participate in the development of AD214 without exposure to the earlier stage risk and the significant investments we're making in our other drug discovery programs or in other areas or applications, um, which again are earlier and may have a different risk profile. Um, what we're really offering here is an opportunity for new investors to help get this desperately needed product um, into the hands or lungs of patients uh, to progress that through phase two clinical trial, which statistically would result in a you know, seven to tenfold value uplift. Uh, without exposure to all the other activities that Adalta is involved in. So it's a, it's a pure play investment in a lower or a de-risked uh, asset um, that will take it, take the product to the next stage and make it absolutely ready for licensing to larger pharmaceutical companies. So, so there, you may be opportunities, there may be opportunities to license this earlier to larger pharmaceutical companies. Certainly, we're actively cultivating that pipeline of larger pharmaceutical companies because they, we need to be ready and they need to be primed when that uh, phase two data becomes available. Uh, and in some cases, you know, they may choose to, to license the product earlier, which gives us all an earlier return on investment. So, but AdSolus continues to work with Pan Ocean Advisory Group and you're raising $60 million for clinical trials. Can you please explain what you're actually going to use the money for? So... We have so far demonstrated the uh, potential efficacy of AD214 in animal models and laboratory models of disease. We've also completed what are called phase one clinical trials for the intravenous version uh, of this drug uh, to demonstrate its safety in humans, in healthy volunteers. The, the majority of the funds that we're raising for AdSolus will be used to take the intravenous version of AD214 and progress it through a phase two clinical trial, which is the first time it will be administered to patients. And that's designed to demonstrate that the results we've seen in animals and laboratory studies translate into humans and demonstrate the initial efficacy of AD214 effectiveness in treating um, IPF. Uh, we will also use some of the funds we're raising to look forward and start preparing the life cycle management strategy for AD214. We believe that we can also deliver this drug subcutaneously. This is as an injection under the skin, such as diabetics do with their insulin every day of their life. Uh, we believe that a weekly subcutaneous injection of AD214 is possible, uh, and this would be way more convenient from patients. They wouldn't have to come in from regional areas to a hospital every two weeks for an injection. They can self-inject at home. This will massively expand the addressable and available market, improve access to the drug. It has, as it turns out, it will also likely reduce the cost of goods because we'll need less protein uh, in the product. Uh, to achieve the same efficacy. So the second part of the funds we will use will be to develop that subcutaneous formulation through to the end of phase one safety clinical trials um, so that it's ready for life cycle management for the large pharmaceutical companies who will take on development at the end of phase two. Tim, that's been really comprehensive. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Look, we know that IPF patients need and deserve better outcomes than we as an industry, as a pharmaceutical industry, can offer them today. Uh, we have done everything we can to develop a product that has every chance of being that better outcome. 
and we're really excited to present that opportunity uh, for new investors to help continue this journey to a better outcome through Ed Solis. We're also excited as a parent company, Adalta, about our new collaborations uh, with Synthesis via Ventures to enable Adsela and open up new applications for our skills and technologies. Um, and these two streams provide multiple near-term transaction opportunities, uh, any one of which we believe will highlight the value uh, of Adalta's underlying assets. When you consider that assets like 8214 have been licensed in recent times for upfront payments of $45 million and more and up to a billion dollars in potential milestones, we believe it's clear that the value of, ass of Adalta's underlying assets are not accurately reflected in our share price today. Um, and so this creates a, a fantastic opportunity, we believe, uh, for investors to join us on, on an amazing journey to go where traditional antibody drugs cannot and to help the half a million patients around the world today who desperately need a treatment to prevent them dying from IPF. That was wonderful, Tim. Thank you very much for your insight into the AD214 process today. We wish you every success in your forthcoming roadshow in North America with John Martin from Pan Ocean Advisory Group. Thanks, Paul. It's been a pleasure to be with you today, and we're looking forward to uh, potentially meeting some of the listeners of this, uh, this uh, session in person on that trip. My name is Paul Ralftree, and I'm CEO of Projects RH. And today we have been speaking with Dr. Tim Oldham, Managing Director of AS Existed AD, sorry, Ad Alta. Ladies and gentlemen, goodbye for now. <laughs>